I'm here with Jacqueline Sullivan, who has brought the most beautiful cards. And now, Jacqueline, you've promised me this is actually super easy. So this how do we get super started? Easy. So we're going to start with a piece of the 9 by 12 matte film. And we'll take that out and tear it in half, which I've already done here. And you want to mark the center. Why are we marking the center? Because we want to work on one side. And if we fold it first, the ink keeps sliding around. So we're going to use the alcohol inks to paint the flower. So we're going to put just one drop of the ink down. That doesn't seem like enough to me. Well, we'll build it in layers. So we're cool. gonna put one drop of the alcohol down. Now my understanding with alcohol ink is the reason you're not doing this on like watercolor paper is it needs that slick surface. Right, it likes the slick surface. It sticks to a lot of slick surfaces. Are you using like the keyboard cleaning I stuff? I am using the keyboard cleaner stuff. So we just keep building this up and it gets darker and darker. That's so cool because you know, I'm kind of a more is more person, so I always want to throw as much as possible on there, but I like the idea of building it slowly. It's part of what is the depth and the beauty of these flowers you've brought. Right, that gives it the depth and creates dimension as you're working. And you kind of want your alcohol to be in the shape that the flower petal is going to be. So if I was going for a round flower petal, which I'm not, I'm trying to get a straight one here, um, you would want it to be so More that's around. just thinking about the angle that you're blowing it right. from, right? right? I love the just soft watercolor look that you get and how you can see the edge of every single layer Precisely. there. Precisely. It's Precisely. super cool. It is very close. If you're familiar with watercolors, it's very close to watercolor techniques. So except tell me the no truth. brushes involved. When you were like cleaning your computer keyboard, did you suddenly go, <laughs> I could use this as an art supply? <laughs> <laughs> well, people were blowing through straws and I'm like, I don't have that much air. What else has got air? <laughs> <laughs> and I, then I saw the keyboard cleaner and thought, well, wow, that will do it. That is really clever. I have to say, I think that there are a lot of things like that where people traditionally do it one way, but you can find a way around it that's easier. I mean, this is what innovation is essentially, right? Right, exactly. You're in your studio, you're always asking the what if question. What if I did this? What if I did that? Oh my God, you are so a girl after my own heart. I ask myself that all the time yeah. because I think that when you do that, that's what leads to discovery because what's the worst thing that happens? You ruin a piece of paper. Exactly, exactly. So. And then I'm gonna put the green on for the little stamen here and kind of spreading it out in the area that I want it. So do you but look at a real... little bit of rubbing alcohol. What does the rubbing alcohol do? It thins it down a little bit and helps it to move. And then it also gives me some more of that kind of dimension. Okay. So it gives me the some make some of it opaque and some of it translucent. So you couldn't use water. I mean that old thing about no. alcohol and water don't mix. Yeah, these don't mix so well. So I'm gonna draw a stem really Whoa. quickly here. I was, getting, I was getting nervous, but I see you're just, it's like a fine liner tip, so you Correct. can draw with right. it. Right, it's, it's, um, it's the way the needle shaped tip is, the ink comes out and you can get um, a good little drawing with it. Now, did you study actual flowers to do this or are these fantasy flowers from your mind? They're kind of fantasy flowers from my mind. <laughs> Which I like because I always think like then it's truly, truly unique because if you wanted to use a photo, you might as well use a photo, right? Correct. That is just such a cool effect how it blows it out like that. It yeah, just really and then you get your light it. area and then with the next layer you get your darker areas. So do you have to wait for it to dry or is it pretty dry it almost It dries immediately? really quickly. It's almost cool. immediate. That's why it'll stick to the slick surfaces. That's so neat. So you could do this on plastic. You could do this on like anything that was non-porous. Right. Plastic, glass, ceramic. A lot of people <gasps> do it on ceramic tiles. Glass. Oh my gosh, ceramic tile. That's such a yeah, good idea. Yeah, they are gorgeous when you do them for coasters or something like that. I love that. I'm renovating a house and I always think like I should make my own tiles, but it seems like a lot <laughs> yeah, of work. Yeah, it's a big job, isn't it? It is. So now I'm going to put some grass around this. Okay. And how did you pick your colors? Did you just pick like nature colors or were you being very specific with your um, palette? No, I just picked nature colors and you know, everybody loves the turquoise teal kind of color. Well, who doesn't? It's a fabulous yeah, exactly. color, right? And even when you see a flower in the field, there's a lot of green behind it. So mm -hmm. even though I've got this big thing coming out, I'm going to So you're just, just defining here. it by adding like a darker right. area. And I can take a brush and kind of pull oh, it up wow. in there and get just a little bit more definition to what I want. That's so, there's so many different ways to control right. it or not control it depending on how you feel. Right, and you just want to be free with it. I mean, they're abstracted flowers, they're not for real. Right. 
So awesome. then when we get that done, I mean, part of what I like on this is the text showing through. I'm gonna take the other half of the sheet and put it here, and I'm going to take a sheet of this printable uh, film, and I have pre-printed it on my computer, and I set it up so that it was four to a page, and so if I cut it in half this way and cut it in half this way, I've got the exact size I need. Oh, perfect. So this is one, and now you don't want to try to put the whole sheet down at once. Oh, is it adhesive backed? It's adhesive backed. Okay, why which, don't you want to try to put the whole sheet down at once? When I did that, I got wrinkles. So oh. to avoid the wrinkles, I'm just gonna take the sheet like so, and I'm gonna line it up at the top. You put that down, and then you just pull uh, this off and burnish. If only it were so easy to avoid wrinkles on your face. Yes, exactly, Wouldn't exactly. We nice? should be so lucky. And then I'm going to put that inside here, and then I get the show through from the flower to the That's words, so which I just cool. love how you can see through that. And this is an extra little page I put inside. I do that with all my cards. So if you want to write a note or something, it's there. And it's cut just a quarter inch smaller than the outside sheets just so it doesn't hang out. Almost like a book Almost, and a It's a book little cover. booklet, exactly. So line them up, except for the middle one, which comes over here, and I'm gonna fold it. And it takes a fair amount of burnishing to fold the film. So you're using a bone folder. I'm using the bone folder. But you could certainly use like a credit card or the back of a knife or just anything that was a hard edge. Exactly, exactly. Then I'm gonna open it up again and I am going to punch two holes. Um, I'm not gonna measure them or try to even be exact because it Why just doesn't matter. Why would you matter. bother, right? Yeah, exactly. Handmade things are always, I think, meant to be a little bit wonky and a little bit handmade, yes, right? Yes, yes. And I'm gonna be just right on the fold here. Okay. As close to it as I can get. And this is, I assume, to, so that you are able to keep all of those pages together, you need to basically bind them. Correct. So our binding is really simple. Some people call it a rubber band binding. This is a piece of elastic thread. Oh, like from buy a it candy box. Oh, yes, a candy box. Um, I'm just gonna tie a little knot in it here. And then I wanna put it through these holes. And this, Julie, is the hardest place, of, hardest part. <laughs> of the whole thing. Well, so make, there's always something in a project that's like a little bit fussy and this is our moment. This is the fussy moment. So you wanna have it lined up mm -hmm. and then you wanna put part of it through that hole. So you're putting the loop through and it's really, because it's fussy because the hole is so tiny. Correct. That's all it is. So the first one usually goes on fairly easily. Now I pick up sticks from the yard and I try to find something that's a little bit interesting but still fairly straight. So, um, and they're about six to nine inches long. So you put the stick in the loop and then pull oh. the loop tight. And then now I'm gonna take another loop. From the other side, the I other see. Side. Okay, so the knot is staying inside the card. Correct. Okay, and that's when you're gonna put that other piece through. Now, now you it could went also right use, through. See how good you are? <laughs> you were worried. If it wouldn't go through, I would have used this little thing I made out of a paper clip and pull it through. Mm, but clever. Just because we're on camera, it decided to take it easy on me. <laughs> so then you're just gonna put this over here yeah. and pull it tight. Now it's loose in here. Okay. So I'm gonna tighten it up just by turning this around. Okay. And making a bigger... A bigger knot. Bigger knot. Very clever. That's so cool. And so now look at this beautiful collection of cards. Absolutely outstanding. I love it. Jacqueline, this has been so fun and so easy, and I feel like I could do it. Thank you.